Hi, this is John Carney, Product Engineer at Cadence. This video is going to give you a quick start on P-SPICE. If you want to simulate a design with P-SPICE using Orchid X Capture, the first thing you're going to want to do is to create a new project. And when you create a new project, check this box to enable P-SPICE simulation. You can store the project wherever you want, but enabling this piece by simulation is going to make sure this piece by toolbar, which lets you set up simulation profiles, look at bias points, probes, all that stuff is going to be active. The next choice is it's going to offer you a choice to base this on an existing project. So if you're doing a make from or a variation of something you've already done, you can do that. If not using this existing project is going to be a good choice because it's going to automatically give you the needed ground symbol that is a necessity in your design. And what I'm talking about is this. Any piece by simulation circuit you need, you need to at least have an absolute zero net or an absolute ground in the design. So that's one of the basic requirements. So once you get your piece by project started, you'll notice you have this piece by toolbar up here. You're not going to need that quite yet. The first thing you need to do is draw and create your circuit. When you want to create your circuit, under the place menu, you're going to have quite a lot of options to place piece by parts. You need to make sure that when you're doing a design to simulate with piece by that every part in the design has a simulatable piece by model attached to it. You can't just go throw a resistor in the design. It's got to be a piece by based component. So you can get access to those from quite a couple of ways. You can go under place piece by part and you have all these basic components in the design, like you can say, I want to place a piece by resistor. You can say place piece by part and you have all these different digital sources, discrete, passives, other sources. So you can say, I want to do a AC based voltage source, place that down. And with this here, this is enough to have a basic piece by simulation. You could just wire this up and simulate that if that's all you wanted to do. After you run the simulation, the PSPICE probe window will open and it will show you the results. Depending on how you have things set up, you may immediately get waveforms or you may need to add some. First, I'll show you how to add waveforms. So if you go under plot and add plot to window, you're going to get another plot up here. You can add as many as you want. And with that plot being selected right here, you can see where this says select, you can go back to the schematic. And then now you have access to your voltage probe, voltage differential, current markers, wattage, those sorts of things. And so we notice that we have an output here called load. So I'll zoom in there a little bit and I'll place a voltage right there on VLOAD. So you notice that turns green. And if you switch back to the probe forms, now you have a voltage marker corresponding to that. That plot is still selected. You can go back to the schematic and you could place voltage uh, someplace else. You could place another voltage someplace. Let's say you're curious what's happening at this pin here. Now you get a red color that corresponds to the red waveform. So depending on the fidelity of what's going on in the time steps, you may not want to have both of them on the same plot. So you could, for example, select one here and delete that and you can see that's very small with respect to the last one so you could have continued to add those two other plots or you could completely delete that plot and then you have these waveforms here the reason these waveforms showed up is because in the simulation profile which you can access here if you go under probe window settings it's going to have the option to display the probe window and then you can have it show the markers from the last plot. So those markers were there from the previous simulation run. And so here you can see this is showing VN, VLOAD, absolute VN and absolute VLOAD. The way you can add things like that also is go to trace, add trace. And then instead of probing from the schematic here, you're going to see you're going to have all the current measurements and voltage measurements and wattage measurements at every node in the circuit. So for example, if you wanted to do something with V load, right? So you can come down here and you can select V load and 
notice down here it's building a trace expression. So right now, if you hit OK, you're just going to get VLOAD. If I delete that and choose to add a trace, if you want to do mathematical operations, you can then first pick the mathematical operation. So I'll pick, for example, absolute value. Notice how it has absolute value and then it has a little brackets. And so now it's waiting for a variable of the brackets and then I'll select VLOAD. So now it built the expression absolute value of VLOAD and then you get that absolute value of VLOAD. So that's how these expressions down here were built. So you can use these mathematical expressions to operate on your things. And then you also have other macros and plot window templates to do all sorts of advanced measurements like a bold plot, Fourier transform, impedance, log, Nyquist, all sorts of things like that. Once you get your plot window set up, you can then select a trace and you can then mark data points. You can do trace properties to change the color, change the symbols. You can manipulate these traces in several different ways. You can, again, if you were to do like cursor on, now what you have is a marching cursor. So as I'm clicking my arrow keys here, you can see it's showing in the table down below every single data point on that selected waveform. You can do that for any waveform here in the graphs. So once you have your waveform selected like that, then if you were to close the simulation waveform and then rerun the simulation, you're going to get the exact same waveforms as you did before. So I reran the simulation and all the waveforms come back exactly the way you are. And then lastly, once you get that done, you can then go into the schematic and then you can start manipulating schematic values and rerunning simulations. For example, you could change a resistor value, rerun the simulation, swap out this component, rerun the simulation. You'll still get all the same measured results or you could set up a different simulation profile. For example, you could switch to the AC profile and then rerun the simulation and then see what your AC simulation results look like, which look like this.